Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I really enjoy covering all ranges of cases, but cases like today's are especially important because cases like today's will hopefully help find a missing child. Today, we are going to be talking about the case of missing five-year-old Michael Vaughn, who's been missing for over eight months now. This little boy essentially vanished, and this little boy may still be out there and need help. So let's dive in today about who this little boy is and what is thought to have happened to him. Michael Joseph Vaughn, who is nicknamed Monkey, was born on July 24th of 2016. Michael is three foot seven. He weighs 50 pounds. He has blue eyes and blonde hair and was last seen wearing a light blue Minecraft shirt and black boxer briefs with lime green stitching, as well as size 11 and flip-flops. Michael's mother, Brandy, describes her son as an energetic young boy who enjoys camping and monster trucks and playing in the dirt. Michael is your typical five-year-old. Brandy also describes in an interview how they were planning on surprising little Michael with a surprise trip to go see the monster trucks when they were in their town. And they bought tickets that never ended up getting used because Michael went missing. And Brandy was really emotional describing how Michael never knew and he may never know that they bought him these tickets and they were going to go see these monster trucks because, again, he went missing. We were supposed to, uh, it was a surprise. We got, they were coming to Idaho. He doesn't even, he doesn't know that we, we bought pit passes and everything. Wow. And because of COVID, we weren't able to go. Um, and then when they came, it was a little bit after monkey had gone missing so we didn't go and i really felt for brandy when she talked about that michael is also one of four children having two sisters and a brother he's also described as being really close to his youngest sister aria who's only about two years old so what happened to this lively five-year-old boy michael was last seen near his home on southwest 9th street in fruitland idaho on july 27th of 2021 he was thought to have last been seen around 6 30 p.m to 7 15 p.m on the screen right now i have google street view on and this is the intersection and streets where michael was last seen as you can see there are a lot of fields in the nearby area. Fruitland is a small city with a population of around 5,400 people in Payette County and is also part of the Ontario micropolitan area. So as you can see, it is pretty rural. There's a lot of farmland nearby and fields. The day that Michael went missing, Brandy says that her son did not want her to go to work. I'm not even really sure if it is really important to why Michael went missing, but it is something that she brings up. So I'm going to lay out the moments before Michael went missing. Moments before the five-year-old went missing, he was last seen in the family's living room playing a Nintendo game. Around 6.40 p.m., Tyler, who is Michael's father, went to check on his youngest daughter, Aria, Michael's little two-year-old sister, and he went to go check on her in her bedroom and order some pizza. So he left the living room, went to go check on the two-year-old in the bedroom, decided he was going to order some pizza. And according to Tyler, this took around 15 to 20 minutes that he wasn't in the living room. And when he went back into the living room that 15 or 20 minutes later, Michael wasn't there. His five-year-old son, had seemingly vanished. Tyler ended up frantically calling Brandy at work, telling her that he couldn't find their son. Brandy immediately left work. She drove home and was greeted with cop cars and neighbors outside. Now, what makes this case strange is that there are witnesses who claim to have seen Michael knocking on neighbors' doors moments before he disappeared. And this is odd to me because why would a five-year-old leave his home and then go knock on random neighbors' doors? While Brandy does say that her son is a friendly child, she also can't explain why he would be seen knocking on people's doors. Brandy also is quote saying that she assumes that Michael went out their side garage door because this leads to their front yard. Searches for Michael included air, water, ground, as well as units with canines. The police have also received over 850 leads that were all cleared. It also seems like early on in the investigation, police would not confirm whether or not Michael had been abducted. And authorities were quoted saying that all options were on the table. On top of that, even though this little five-year-old boy had gone missing, there was never an Amber Alert issued. This is said to be because there were no suspects or vehicle descriptions or anything that they could put in an Amber Alert that would meet the requirements of an Amber Alert. Now, what I found really interesting about this no vehicle aspect of not having an Amber Alert is that authorities would come out and say that they actually had two vehicles they were interested in talking to the drivers of. One vehicle they were very interested in was a white Honda Pilot, saying in October of 2021, the 2016 to 2020 year model Honda was seen leaving the area on Southwest 8th Street, and it was seen on Southwest 8th Street around 6.47 p.m. the night Michael went missing. So that brings up the question of if there was a vehicle that they were interested in why couldn't they launch an Amber Alert for a little five-year-old Michael so that people in the surrounding area and county would know that this five-year-old was missing and he'll be looking for him? However, they did come out to say that a code red was later put out for Michael and this alerted the media area. But it is really interesting to me that we do have things like Amber Alerts and they can't always be used 
for things like a five-year-old missing boy. November 18th of 2021, Fruitland Police Chief Jay Huff announced in a press conference that there was an increased possibility that little Michael had been abducted. And this seemed to be because they hadn't made any headway in any of the ground searches and they hadn't located Michael. This is also around the time when Brandy and Michael's mother makes a statement to the public. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for all being here today. My name is Brandy Neal, and I am Michael Joseph Vaughn's mama. I am here before all of you today on behalf of my family to speak about Michael. As much and everyone in our family wants to be up here in front of all of you today, I am here to speak on all of our behalf. I am here to ask you all, I'm here to ask you please, please for your help. I am here to ask you to please keep Michael's face, his name and his story in every one of your hearts, your eyes and your minds. It has been 115 days 115 days, he has not been home. And we need every one of you. I need you. I need your help to bring my baby home. I need you to see his beautiful smile. I need you to see how happy he is. That smile was one of our most favorite camping trips. He he got to see his first beaver dam. And he got to catch so many frogs that day. And he was so excited. His beautiful blue eyes. He was so happy that day because I promised we would go get ice cream cones. And he laughed so hard because his baby sister got to have her first ice cream cone and it was everywhere. We got to play at the park that whole day. It was warm, it was sunny, and we played catch, we played football until it got dark. I need you, I need your help, please. He is such a sweet, fun, exciting little boy. He brings such joy and love to our family and everyone that he knows and that knows him. Michael has a laugh that is beyond contagious. You can't help but smile and laugh when you hear his laugh. I, I am asking for your help. I am asking for everyone's help. Please, please, if you know anything, if you know anything at all, if you know something, please, I am begging. This is my baby. This is my son. I need him home. I want him home. Please, I need your help to bring him home. Now, I found this very interesting. There is a retired FBI agent named Jennifer Koffendoffer, who was also a consultant on the Gabby Petito case. She told the Idaho Press in a phone interview that she believed that Michael is of the very small percentage of kids that is subject to stranger abductions. And I think this is very key information and a very important opinion because over the last year, I have covered countless cases where the parents are the prime suspects in the child being missing or they are responsible for their child being missing or killed. But when it comes to Michael Vaughn, it seems that the parents have pretty much been ruled out for the most part and that they're primarily looking for a stranger. And I find that very interesting. The difference between lots of cases that we've seen where the parents are the ones being scrutinized and looked at for the reason the child is missing. And then there's cases like this where the child goes missing, the last person to 
pretty much see the child is the father besides these other people saying that they've seen him knocking on doors, yet the parents have been ruled out. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's definitely good that they've ruled the parents out then and that they are looking in the proper direction. But I just find it interesting, the contrast in different cases and whether the parents are the ones scrutinized or not. Speaking of strangers being responsible, there are also over 20 registered sex offenders in the Fruitland area. Meaning if Michael did wander off, there were multiple people in the area that may feel the urge to kidnap a small child, a small child that's wandering off on their own. And that honestly breaks my heart for little Michael. But that could also mean that he could still be out there alive with one of these people. Although I don't want to imagine the trauma if that is the case. On top of the white Honda Pilot, I did mention earlier that there is another vehicle that the authorities were interested in, and that vehicle is a blue Dodge Avenger, and it was last seen leaving the area that Michael went missing. Now, thanks to the public, the Dodge was eventually found and tracked down, and the driver was interviewed by police. There was also an adult male with dark hair and facial hair wearing dark colored shorts, no shirt, and this male was seen jogging on the sidewalk the night that Michael went missing. There was also a second adult male seen in the area. He had dark hair. He was wearing a white t-shirt and black shorts, and he was seen walking off Southwest 8th Street down the park area past the splash pads towards the lower drainage behind the neighborhood. This male has not yet been identified along with the Honda Pilot, so authorities are still very interested in these two individuals. But that also makes me question if they do have this footage of these people driving around and these people jogging and walking the area. You think that there would be also footage of them taking Michael with them, and there isn't. So I'm feeling like they're really just interested in talking to these individuals because they might have seen Michael walking around, or they might have just information of other people in the area that seems sketchy. Now, I could be totally wrong with that, and there might just not be angles of these people in the entire area. But it also makes me wonder then, if they do have footage of these people in the area, why isn't there footage of Michael wandering off from his home? Just a lot of questions. Let's chat about because that one I'm really interested in. Hello from my iPhone. So my laptop decided to freeze while I was finishing up the video. So I lost the end of the video and I don't have time to refilm it with all of my proper equipment. So so here we are all casual, but I really wanted to let you guys know that I think you should check out the interview that Brandy did with the interview room, who's a YouTuber. I'll have that link down below. And I recommend watching that if you want to get a deeper dive into the case. I found it super interesting to hear from Brandy and have her talk about Michael and the events of the day. She was super emotional and you can really tell that it was really hard for her to do that interview, but she wants to spread the word about her son. Also, as of this time, there is a reward for over $50,000 for any information that will lead to Michael being found and brought home. So that's pretty much the majority of the information on Michael's disappearance. There's really not a lot, as you can see, but this little boy needs to be found. So if you have any information on where Michael is or any information about this case, please contact the appropriate authorities because we need to bring little Michael home. The sweet little boy that loved to play with monster trucks is out there somewhere right now. And he's out there somewhere scared or worse, but he does need to be brought back to his parents' arms. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It does help me be able to spend more time on these cases and it spreads the word about these cases that I think are very important. With that, I hope everyone stays safe out there. Also, thank you for bearing with me because I've been working so many hours and technology clearly hates me. So yeah, I will see you in the next video.